The 1990s saw the birth of cable news and the 24-hour news cycle. For the first time in history, the entire world was connected in such a way that allowed everybody to see news events as they unfolded. So on the morning of September 11, 2001, within minutes of the first plane hitting the World Trade Center, that scene was literally on billions of TVs all around the world. The breathless news reporters mirrored our confusion. What was going on? Was it a terrorist attack? Was it an accident? Was it a suicidal pilot? Was this really happening? Their questions were answered at 9.03, when a second plane appeared in the corner of the screen and collided into the South Tower. The news traveled around the world even faster after that. People crowded in front of TVs and bars, restaurants, offices, stores, literally billions of people watching on in horror as these two buildings eventually crumbled to the ground, taking nearly 3,000 lives with it. September the 11th wasn't the biggest disaster in human history, but it was by far the most watched. The emotional shockwave ripped through humanity, shaping the politics and culture to follow. But according to what researchers have found in this little plastic box, it may have actually put a dent in consciousness itself. Faiz Hadar asked, what is consciousness? The question of consciousness is way too big for one video. I could do an entire YouTube channel on it. I won't. I've got enough to do right now. But the biggest debate about consciousness is whether or not it's internal or external. Is it all inside our own skull? Just the random firings of hundreds of billions of neurons in an emergent phenomena that we can't quite see? Or is it something else? Something woven into the fabric of the universe in an emergent phenomena that, well, we can't see? Brain researchers and computer scientists are finding plenty of reason to believe it's the former. But there's a group called the Global Consciousness Project that's starting to find some evidence that it might be the latter. Now, I know for some of you, this episode is going to be a bridge too far, so for you, I'm going to hit the patented woo-woo alarm. <laughs> but keep watching, because it does get pretty interesting. And it all starts with a coin toss. In any one coin flip, you've got a 50% chance of getting heads and a 50% chance of getting tails. It's completely up to physics and random motions. Now, if you lost a coin toss, you might try to make the argument that, well, it's weighted more on the tail size. So that's not really fair. But no, you can't do that because the sample size is way too small to make that kind of an assumption, okay? You just lost. Deal with it. Loser. I'm just kidding. We're all winners here. You're a winner. But let's say you flip the coin a hundred times, or a thousand times, and 60% of the time it's coming up heads. Now you're starting to see a pattern. In that case, you can make a compelling argument that maybe there is something in the weight or the shape of the coin that's giving it a slightly higher probability of landing on heads. But that's something you could never have ascertained with just a few coin flips. It's only in those large numbers that you can see patterns in the randomness that point to some fundamental truths. By the way, this is how they found the Higgs boson. They didn't just smash a couple of atoms together and out popped the God particle. Quantum particles are way too random for that. They ran millions of tests that over time showed a spike in a certain frequency where they felt the Higgs boson should be. This is legitimate science. So in 1976 at Princeton University, a graduate student reached out to the Dean of Engineering, Robert Johns, with an interesting idea. She wanted to do her thesis on whether or not the human mind can create patterns in random mechanical systems. For instance, if you flipped a coin a thousand times and focused more on heads, would you get more heads? That sounded dirty. For instance, if you flipped a coin a thousand times and focused on tails, would you get more ta- You get the idea. But instead of flipping coins, which would take forever, she wanted to use a random number generator. A random number generator is basically a coin flipping machine, except instead of heads and tails, it's ones and zeros. And it does it 200 times a second. So you could get the kind of numbers in 10 seconds that would take you hours if you were flipping a coin. Plus, the larger sample size gives you more opportunities to see patterns in the randomness. This, obviously, is a controversial topic. And Robert Johns was a rocket engineer. He had no experience in anything like this. So he basically told her, look, you do an experiment, and if I find it convincing, I'll let you do it. The results of her experiments were so convincing that he not only let her do it for her thesis, he created an entire lab at Princeton to study this phenomena. It's called the Princeton Engineering Anomalies Research Lab, or PEAR for short. For 30 years, this lab at Princeton University studied the phenomenon of human consciousness interacting with chaotic and random systems. And over and over again, their research seemed to imply that there is a connection there. Eventually, this research got the attention of Dr. Roger Nelson, who tweaked the hypothesis just a little bit and said, what if it's not intention that causes it, but just attention? The double slit experiment, for example, showed that our conscious observation can change the behavior of subatomic particles. What if that extended out into the physical world? And could these random number generators pick up on that? He began testing with groups of people. People doing something together, like watching a movie or a sporting event or meditating. 
Sometimes they knew they were part of an experiment, sometimes they didn't, but his research began to turn up some really interesting conclusions. Focused attention amongst groups of people, especially in heightened emotional states, led to patterns in the randomness that shouldn't exist. So he hatched an idea. To place these random number generators in cities all around the world and monitor them 24-7 to see if there are any correlations between world events and spikes in the number patterns. And the Global Consciousness Project was born. Over and over again, major world events have correlated with spikes in the random numbers around the world, often showing stronger intensity according to the proximity to the event and the intensity of the emotions surrounding the events. Which leads us back to 9-11. As I said at the beginning, 9-11 was witnessed by more people on the planet than any other traumatic event in world history. A fact that was reflected in the results by the Global Consciousness Project. The patterns not only went off the chart, the spike lasted several days, finally settling back into randomness around the 15th. This is considered by many involved to be the most spectacular example of this phenomena, but it's not just because of the intensity of the result. There was a surprise in the numbers from that day, one that has so far defied explanation. Let's look at that chart again. You might have been wondering when you were looking at this chart earlier what this line is. This line marks 8.46 a.m., the moment the first plane hit. Notice something interesting here? The spike had already begun well before that. In fact, the spike began three hours before the plane hit. What the f Was the collective emotion of 9-11 so strong it caused a temporal distortion in the fabric of consciousness? Did it cause a shift in space-time itself? Are all of our brain waves flying away from our head and combining with other people's brain waves to form this vast ocean of consciousness? Is there some emergent consciousness at the fundamental quantum level that we can interact with in some way? Is this the brain all the string theorists are talking about? Or is our consciousness a fundamental part of our physical world, not only reacting to it, but shaping it? Are these words actually coming out of my mouth? The Paralab and the Global Consciousness Project are not even asking those questions right now. They're just trying to collect as much information and evidence as possible, because as they say, extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. And there's a lot of skeptics out there. But even with the data they've already collected, Dr. Roger Nelson claims that the possibility of these correlations happening totally at random is one in a million. But still, there's a lot of work to be done. If you're interested in this subject and want to hear more about it, be sure and check back next week because I am debuting the very first Answers with Joe interview. I'm going to talk to a guy who's developing an app that will allow all of us to participate in the Global Consciousness Project with your phone, basically turning your phone into a random number generator. It's a really cool topic. He's a really cool dude. So be sure and check that out. So I've got to be honest, I've always been a little bit interested in this topic because when I was a kid, I worked at a grocery store in my hometown. This is a really small hometown. And I always noticed that there were these weird uh, rushes out of nowhere where people, like half the town suddenly showed up at the store at the same time for no particular reason. It tied in with nothing. And I never understood what that was about. And I had this idea in my head, like, are we all connected in some weird unconscious way? It's something that's always stuck with me, so when I found out about this, I thought it was really interesting. Big shout out to the Answer Files who support this channel on Patreon. Wouldn't happen without you, and it's making a huge difference in the quality and the time that I have available to work on these things. Hugely important. If you want to contribute, you can go to patreon.com slash answerswithjoe, and there's all kinds of cool perks. They start at just a dollar. Thanks everybody for watching. If you found this interesting, please share it on your social media, give it a thumbs up, and if this is your first time here and you've never seen anything like this before, Hit the subscribe button because I come back with stuff just like this every Monday. Okay, you guys are awesome. Thanks for watching, and I will see you back here next Monday. Love you guys. Take care.